Madison, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. You know, I really wanted to have you on with us because I really think it takes so much courage right now to start a new business um, and might. There's a might that comes with that courage, especially in the middle of a pandemic. So I am excited to uh, have you share with our listeners a little bit of your journey along the way. So let's just start with the simplest question of all. And why did you want to start your clothing resale business in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> That's a great question. Thanks for that. Um, so really, truly, this has been a dream of mine, um, at least for the last 10 years. And I've been trying to search and see if it was beyond that time. I think I wanted to open a store and a clothing store for a very long time. And then I got into the resale industry and I kind of saw, aha, this is the way, this is the best way um, ethically to buy clothing and to kind of recirculate the clothing that's already existed. So I think it, the timing really happened um, because the two main resale stores in our town um, closed down at the same time. And one was due to the pandemic and another one was kind of for other reasons. Um, and I, you know, I have been looking for other communities to open up a store like this, but I really, my heart is really here in Boulder, Colorado. And um, so when both of those stores that were doing this type of business that I had been wanting to open for years and years closed at the exact same time, I kind of saw that as an opening. And yes, it's a pandemic. And also this type of resale model does really well in an economic downturn is what we know. We know people want to sell their clothes and make some extra money. And we know that people want to shop secondhand. Um, I mean, both for the environmental, you know, um, reasons and also for the, the state, you know, the um the economic reasons. And so mainly people, people need affordable clothing right now. And they're also really focused on the environment and how they can kind of, you know, taking that break um, in the, you know, the quarantine. And it's like, oh, wow, how can I really be a benefit to the planet and to my community? And I think, um, yeah, for me, this is that. And I, and I think a lot of people are thinking in that direction as well. Beautiful. And, you know, when I first met you, which was about 10 years ago, when you were in your fashion design school in San Francisco, did, how much of what you learned in school are you starting to find you can apply in your business today? Mm, that's a, another great question. Um, yeah. So when I, I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in San Francisco, um, and my, my major there was communication design and it was a lot of graphic design and a lot of kind of set design. And I think the biggest thing I'm learning or that I'm using right now from what I learned in that degree was um, just merchandising, like, like, you know, creating levels and creating colorways. And I've just always loved merchandising in stores. And so that's interestingly a big thing that I'm utilizing. I mean, the graphic design bit, I'm not really doing so much of that right now because I have other people who are doing that really expertly um, for the company. And so I'm kind of giving that to, to others. Um, but yeah, you know, just like just visual aesthetic um, and just kind of fine tuning that, which I think I had since I was a kid um, and like, you know, how to, to create a cohesive brand and a cohesive, you know, social story and, and all of that. I think, yeah, I think that the, yeah, just general visual aesthetic um, curation is kind of the biggest thing that I'm that I'm remembering from my education. And, and at the Beautiful. And, and, I, and I have to ask you too, oh, so you named the store Apocalypse or Disco Apocalypse. Like, tell me more about that. Yeah. So the store is called Apocalypse. Um, and uh, our social media is Disco Apocalypse. So Instagram Disco period Apocalypse. Okay. Um, I came up with Disco Apocalypse quite a few years ago, I want to say like maybe two or three years ago, and I was just doing little like pop-up vintage, um, vintage markets, and so I would like, yeah, pop up at different stores or different little markets, um, and it's, 
it's interesting because I was like, oh, wow, this has become even more relevant in 2020. And actually, we had some signs up on the window of the store that said, coming soon, apocalypse. And Jared <laughs> Polis, Jared Polis, our governor, took a picture of that and tweeted it and said, how very 2020. Um, so that was kind of my thinking behind that. It's like this word apocalypse, we've heard it so much, especially like last year in 2020 and even now because you know, our world has shifted and changed so much. And there's so many moments where we have no idea, like the scope of what we're in right now. And it's like, it's truly historic, right? And so I was like, I love this word apocalypse. And then one of my teachers, she's like, well, I really encourage you to like, look that word up and really dig into what that means. Because, you know, naming anything is, is really important and it's really big and it's kind of like a prophecy in a way. So I looked up this word apocalypse and and yes, of course, like the disaster and destruction is part of the definition and that's kind of the wider known. Um, but in 2020, I also saw this reframing happening kind of collectively and another one of the definitions is a revelation of knowledge in which um, the forces of good triumph over the forces of evil or in which a cataclysm happens and then the forces of good triumph over the forces of evil. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, I was like, okay, that's, that's what this is actually. It's, it's not the, the general definition, disaster and destruction. It's actually the forces of good overcoming the forces of evil. And and I think that that's kind of what people are being faced with. It's like the new paradigm and there's kind of so much evil that we're faced with and so much disaster and destruction that we have to actively choose to, to kind of create the new world that we want to live in. And so that's kind of the reframing of apocalypse that we, that we were interested in, in, in naming our business. But yeah. Beautiful. And did you know that Jackson Brown has a song called Disco Apocalypse? I didn't even know that. No, that's amazing. I didn't either. And I was just doing a little research uh, before we got on here together. And this, here's what I love. The, these are the first words to the song. It said, he, he, he sang, I would suppose that would be, down the side streets and the avenue, there be sisters walking two by two. Their dresses and their shoes are new. Wow. Isn't, that, isn't that wild? Yeah. <laughs> so wild. Yeah. Thanks for bringing the disco back in. So with naming the Instagram and even just our website is also disco apocalypse. They're like, you know, if, if you don't have that full vision of what the store is and what apocalypse means to us, then it can sound kind of ominous and, you know, a little scary. And so we're like, let's add the disco in. And, and for me, I, I've been really into dancing for the last five years or so. And so yeah, it's like, it, it reminds me of that REM song. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. Yes. Um, and it's like, yeah, maybe it feels like the world is crumbling around us and we can make the best of our experience here and um, yeah, and be a benefit to our, as I said, to our world and to our community. Fantastic. What has been your greatest delight in opening up the store? Mm. Yeah, you know, truly it's been um, just the team that has come together. And so we've rehired people that were working at Crossroads, which is a kind of a big national chain, resale chain um, that uh, closed down just a few blocks away from where we're at now. And then we also rehired some, some people that were working at Buffalo Exchange, another national chain, um, and the franchise Colorado locations closed um, in 2020. And so those people, and then there's a few from like the, the consignment stores in town. Um, and so everyone has this like vast understanding of clothing and knowledge and um, yeah. And just kind of like, it just feels like a diverse team cross-generational. Um, and so just bringing those people together and kind of also just bringing those people back to their joy and mm. their bliss, which is secondhand you know, buying and secondhand shopping and creating uh, an environment to foster that for the community. Um, so yeah, just just connecting with those people and kind of creating that circle. Um, and yeah, just it feels really supportive. And and I think for them, it's it's supportive as well. So I think that that's the biggest joy. For you me know, right I was now. just talking to somebody yesterday about how right now, like there's a lot of government monies for current small businesses, which is great. Um, 
However, there's nothing for startups and, and startups have to happen. I mean, there has to be something coming up from the ashes, right, of all these small businesses that have gone under. And I love hearing that because you've now given employment to people who lost their jobs um, by doing that. So I think that's really awesome and something I'm actually really going to go to bat about because I'm like, wait a minute, startups need the money too, you know, like these people all have to go somewhere and how are we going to do it if we don't start new businesses? Um, what's been your greatest challenge? Mm -hmm. Maybe even something you didn't expect that kind of. Yeah. Just... yeah. Let's see. That's a really good one as well. I mean, I think it's been, you know, it's like, so, so we're buying clothing from the public and so people bring, bring things in. And so, it requires a lot of education on our part. Mm. And truly I've been for the last three years, I've been producing um, embodiment immersions for a company called the 360 Emergence. Um, and my teachers, Amber Ryan and Kate Shella, I, just, I learned so much from them. And so I just wanna give some gratitude out to them right now. Um, but yeah, that was like, it was such a different world, right? And I really wasn't fully keeping up and staying on the pulse of, fashion and like what's cool and what are the kids into right now and and I mean I've been interested in it my whole life my mom is a jewelry designer so and she was like super interested in fashion and and clothing as well so like since I was a kid I've been really into that and I say I know more about like like 90s and like early 2000s designers than I do about like what's currently happening so I think um you know, I think a challenge for me has been like humbling myself and remembering that I don't know everything and that like there's so much there's so much to be learned from everyone else on the team as well. And I think that's the beauty as well. And there was moments of real vulnerability where I was like, oh, I don't know. And just reminding myself of like, you can't know everything because there's just so many, there's so many brands. There's so, there's so many, you know, influencers right now too. And there's so many um, tastemakers. And so you, you just, you don't know everything. And so I think like um, humbling myself to remember that and to, to be educated by the team and by the community, you know, it's like, Hey, where'd you get this amazing sweater? I've never heard of this brand before that, that can be a challenge. And it's also another joy just to humble myself to that. And, and what's the hot uh, fashion item right now? What's, what's the mm -hmm. must have? Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, for our, for our, business model we're not brand specific so I'm not going to throw out any brands right um, right right did yeah we did just um do a little style guide that I love and you know and another email we're about to send out is like the the DIY renaissance and how um like you know anyway I'll talk more about that but so tie-dye is really in um like tie-dye sets so like anything where you have a matching top and a bottom um, like monochromatic sets, of course, like everyone's loving loungewear and people are wearing their like full I wonder cashmere. Why. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, so loungewear is really great. And when we see it secondhand and it's in great condition still, that's like really desirable, I'd say for people right now. Um, yeah. And then also just loving like bright kind of psychedelic patterns and kind of like loud colors and, and that kind of thing. But I would, I would say right now sets are really in and loungy stuff is really awesome. Awesome. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking of, of going into this and, and everything, I mean, even from the marketing perspective, and maybe let's even before you answer that question, from a marketing perspective, what, you know, it, it, it looks like you've really built a nice audience on Instagram, you're really, you know, you're getting your name out there. How, how what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I would actually say delegation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like, you know, as I said before, it really takes a team and it takes so many different perspectives. Um, and so I, I would say, um, you know, I mean, as an owner of a business, there's so many different things to consider. And right now my main focus is like training all, everyone on the team to become a buyer so that they can all kind of run the store if I'm not there. Um, and and learning that part of it. So I, I have two people right now, um, Lana Shores and Mason Notaboom, and they're doing an amazing job and they're actually like 
running social and creating the newsletters. And of course, like, you know, we're working super closely together on those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, I've just gotten that advice before as well. It's like, we can't do everything. And so for me, delegation and also the, this younger generation, like they're so tapped into how to be successful on social media and, you know, how to create marketing campaigns that, that are really striking and really engaging. And so, yeah, for me, delegating those things out has been um, a, a gift and part of the, the success Very wise. of it. Yeah. Um, what, so, because you've been very busy. I mean, it's it's not like you've been hearing crickets. You've been very busy. And um, what would you say is your most, is it is it word of mouth, uh, referral? Like, what do you think is really bringing traffic into the store? Yeah. Um, I mean, so part of our strategy was to reopen in a store that was already existing as a resale store for 10 years in Boulder. I think, um, so we're in the old Buffalo Exchange location on Pearl Street, and they were actually in Boulder for about 20 years. And I actually, I used to work for them about six years ago. Um, and that's kind of where I got started in resale and how I got inspired to actually like create something like this myself one day. And so I went from working for them to working for a bunch of other resale stores because I just wanted to see like, what's the best way to do this. Um, And so luckily we're in a space where people already know it as a resale space. And so that's, that's been really great. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, honestly, I think it's, I think it's word of mouth. I mean, I think between like, you know, myself and my partners, and then everyone that's on our team who was in resale before, like, it's pretty easy to kind of spread that word. Um, And I think there's still a lot of people that don't know about us. So um, yeah, as you said, I'm busy. And so I'm looking forward to having a little more spaciousness to kind of, um, yeah, put a, a real game plan together. But I think we're really excited about just like, going out on the street and like giving people our $5 off coupons and, you know, letting them know that we're open, putting up posters on the mall. Um, and, and I think social is great too. We've grown our social following, um, by like three times in the last like month and a half. So, um, so I think social media is going to be great. And we've started networking with a lot of like local influencers and, um, producers and creative directors for, for doing photo shoots. So those should be coming coming soon. And um, yeah, I think just new networking in general, whether it's on social or whether it's on the ground in person, like you said, word of mouth. Fantastic. Fantastic. And and I just love the freshness of what you're putting out there. Your team is doing a great job, a really great job on all that. So fantastic. Um, How can people reach out to you? And um, do you have certain days that you are um, taking clothing in? versus, you know, just selling. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, right now the best way for us has been, has been Instagram. Um, so it's at disco period apocalypse. Um, also our, you know, if anyone wants to email us, it's Hey at disco apocalypse.co, not.com.co. Um, and, and our website is being created right now. We have like a landing page, but that's going away. And soon our full website will be out and we will actually have a, an e-commerce web store. And we're really excited to have that, especially during the pandemic so that people can shop, you know, from their couches and those people that are not ready to get out and be in a, you know, a physical space yet can find clothing still, um, But yeah, so finding us on Instagram is great. And then um, we have a booking system for selling clothing to us. So we're looking, you know, we, like I said, we're not brand specific. We'll take in contemporary modern clothing. We'll take in vintage clothing. We'll look at high end and low end clothing um, that's in really great condition and kind of relevant um, to our community and what our community is wearing right now. And so, yeah, on, on our Instagram, there's a link to book an appointment to sell to us. And we are open every day, except for Mondays right now. And I'm kind of hoping that we'll, um, you know, be busy enough to, to open back up maybe in the spring or summer on Mondays. Um, but most of the people on our block right now and kind of along the East Pearl um, or East Pearl Street are not open on Mondays, a lot of retailers. So it's been kind of good to just be in solidarity with that. Um, but we buy clothes every day that we're open. So Tuesday through Sunday and yeah, book an appointment. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And I love how you've done it in stages because I went to your website and I thought this is so cool. 
And then I realized, oh, this is probably just the, the warm up page, right? Yeah, because it, yeah, but it, it, you did a, a fantastic job on that for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think one thing that I, I'm like, one thing that is my work in this is kind of letting go of perfection. And it's like, you know, we need a landing page and it's not exactly how we want it to look. And so just letting go of like, it's just not going to be perfect from the beginning. And as I said, like, as we get going, we'll have more spaciousness to really fine tune and refine um, some other things that, that I, that I'd like to refine. That we wise, always. wise, wise. Cause I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs just hold back. Well, I'll just wait till it's perfect. And, and that's never a good idea. Got to jump in there and go. Okay. Well, as we close up here, any final words uh, that you want to share either about the store or just any uh, thing you want to say to anybody out there that has a dream like you did that wants to make it come to life? Mm. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I'm just thinking of this like funny meme that I saw on Instagram the other day. And it was like, it was like, pre, you know, COVID work life balance. And it was like a really solid work life balance. And then it was like, the after and it was like, um, anyway, it was like, the, the balance was destroyed and the life part <laughs> was really lost. Yeah, it was really lost. And so today um, is like my first uh, kind of two days in a row off. This is like my wow. first actual official weekend. I've been like, you know, taking one day off um, here and there. And so I would say really like nourishing yourself mm. so that you can, you know, if you're, so you can show up and, and be like the leader that you need to be. And so I think, you know, cooking and working out and just being outside and all those good things that really fill us up. I think it's so important for, for being a leader and being a business owner and, and for the company, you know, if it, it really, it comes from the top. And so if the, if the owner um, or the in charge is like depleted, it really shows. And, it, you know, I think that people can really feel that. So I would say just giving back to yourself and nurturing yourself as much as possible is, um, really important. And, and so finding that work-life balance, I think is crucial. Awesome. 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 Great words. And with that, I will close us off for today. Thank you so much, Madison. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate you. Happy to be here. Awesome.